Welcome everyone once again. Let's talk about urban planning and let's talk about strategies to convert empty office buildings into housing in Istanbul. And in this city in particular, the pandemic caused a surge in empty office spaces, especially in the expensive city center. While there was, there is a lack of affordable housing in the area. Uh, and so I've invited Zeynep Aydemir, uh, to tell us about a project where architecture students redesigned um, a vacant high-rise, the TED Towers, into housing. And so this conversation will help us to um, understand how projects of this nature can address housing shortages, uh, provide learning experiences for students um, in many ways, such as, for example, sustainable design. Zeynep, welcome to our episode. So Zeynep, thank you for inviting me. There is a um, high vacancy rate in office buildings globally, okay, particularly particularly in expensive city centers. While at the same time, there's a lack of affordable housing in those same areas. So, and the situation is projected to worsen uh, if left unaddressed. And so, your study looks into a potential good solution for the problem, right? Yes. Well, uh, in our design studio, we started looking at the adaptive use of uh, high-rise buildings for housing in Istanbul Central Business District. This idea really uh, took shape when we noticed a big shift to remote work, especially after the COVID-19 pandemic. And plus there are uh, quite a few high-rise buildings in uh, Istanbul that have never been occupied uh, since they were built. Uh, we call them ghost buildings actually. So these bu buildings have um, higher rents and operational costs. Uh, which is why many of them are vacant. But uh, here's the interesting part, that they have a lot of potential for being converted from official to residential spaces. They're in the city center, they have great infrastructure, and they're built to with, uh, withstand earthquakes. So on top of that, Istanbul is also dealing with a pretty serious housing crisis due to a combination of economic issues, a rising number of migrants, and the extreme earthquake risk. So we thought this situation presented a good research opportunity for architecture students to tackle these real world problems in the design studio. And what are the highlights of this project? So what, what would you pinpoint? Okay, so our study turned up some really interesting uh, insights about the area's development. Uh, first of all, historically the area, this part of Istanbul stayed um, pretty rural until the 1950s. And it was originally meant to be a military buffer zone uh, to protect the city's northern forests and water basins. But then in the 1950s, things started to shift uh, with affordable housing projects in the area and the growth of the automotive, pharmaceutical and textile in industries. And this boom uh, brought a lot of internal migration in the 1980s. So what started as an industrial zone has now become a mix of legalized scattered neighborhoods, gated communities, shopping malls, uh, and high rises in the central business district. So our students focused on the adaptive reuse of two specific uh, vacant buildings, but they also looked into broader planning problems uh, in the area. It's interesting because uh, studying energy crisis, high rise buildings and extreme conditions in architectural studios often uh, gets overlooked. So we realized there is a big need for adaptable spaces that support communal or co-living arrangements. And these spaces should be designed to optimize resources and energy use, and they need to handle extreme conditions. So uh, there were some cool ideas mm -hmm. uh, from our students. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them are like, they uh, offered structural improvements uh, for the top towers, the tower we focused on. And um, they offered blurring the lines between residential and office spaces to create mixed use adaptable areas and short-term housing solutions like dorms and shelters. Uh, they also uh, offered improving pedestrian access and public social programs uh, by promoting walkability and better public accessibility. Uh, also, uh, they offered developing systems to optimize energy use and generate new energy. And uh, finally, they uh, offered incorporating production and recycling systems into future living scenarios. So these were the 
uh, main findings of of the study. Oh, perfect. And following up on that might be a little bit of a obvious question, but who can learn from the results of this project? So who can learn from this, from this outcome? And what are the lessons that you think are suitable to pass to other stakeholders? Yes. Well, we work with students, but uh, one of the big takeaways from our study is that we need a broader conversation to tackle these challenges. It's really, really important to integrate these findings with uh, diverse ac academic courses and come up with comprehensive recommendations. And also today, both research and practical applications in design are evolving rapidly and uh, uh, lines are blurring. So our findings could influence public policies by encouraging more adaptive reuse of buildings, for example, which can help address housing shortages and optimize resource use. And institutions and organizations can use these insights to rethink urban planning and development strategies, focusing more on mixed use spaces and energy efficiency. And also companies could benefit by exploring new business opportunities in the adaptive reuse market. And individuals might be more open to uh, living in adaptable and energy efficient spaces. So overall, our uh, study highlights the need for a collaborative approach to urban planning and design, which we can consider as both current challenges and our future needs. Um, I read your article and you indicate a potential gap in this project, potential, which well, you'll tell me if not a potential venue for um, future research. So that mm -hmm. must be uh, done more research on a specific interior design standards for these converted spaces. And you were mentioning this, which uh, I think was important, the potential uh, renewable energy generation, waste management systems in projects like this. So tell us more about uh, where should future research go? Well, our article really highlights the potential for converting high-rise vacant office buildings in Istanbul, but because of the limited time frame of the studio, our findings were somehow uh, broad. So for future research, there are plenty of opportunities, uh, for example, more in-depth and and targeted studies on design solutions uh, for interior uh, standards, for example, essential to um, pinpoint specific internal space standards or uh, to better understand the practicalities of these conversation, uh, com conversions, sorry. Uh, so there is so much more to explore. And especially when it comes to the details of how these spaces can be adapted and optimized for residential use. So while we scratch the surface, uh, there's a lot more to uncover, and we hope our work paves the way for those more detailed studies in the future. Perfect. Uh, and you mentioned before uh, some lessons for companies, you know, that were for working companies. So the study focused uh, on a design studio project with students. So how do you think? This uh, I will before I uh, know your reflections. I will use my privilege as moderator. So, how do you think the findings or might differ if conducted by professional architects with real uh, world constraints like budget or timelines? So, how how could this be different? Well, as I mentioned, because of the limited time frame and our teaching goals, we couldn't look as deeply into designing housing units or experimenting with materials. Mm -hmm. So if pro professional architects were involved, I think they could explore these areas more thoroughly and have detailed discussions on new forms of housing and space standards than converting office spaces into residential use. Mm -hmm. And uh, additionally, professionals would likely bring a practical perspective on budget and timelines, uh, which would influence the feasibility of certain design choices. They would also consider the regulatory environment, local building codes, uh, and stakeholder needs more closely. So real world projects might require more collaboration with engineers, developers, and city planners, adding layers of complexity and practicality that we didn't fully address in the studio setting. Of course, of course, perfect. And well, I'm curious to know your personal reflections about this project. So how, uh, Zeynep, how do you personally see the project, the end result, and the lessons for the future? So what are your thoughts on this? Well, what was interesting for me is uh, how adaptive reuse is becoming 
such a hot topic in architectural education, especially with the growing discussions around limiting new constructions or even stopping them altogether. Uh, so our main goal was uh, for students to create research-driven design projects that integrate complex architecture programs with, within an urban context. Also, they were asked using advanced technologies and representations. So working on speculative and adaptive reuse scenarios in Istanbul's central business district gave them a unique real-world uh, context to apply their skills, first of all. And uh, one thing that really stood out was how repurposing spaces with historical value uh, into new unique landmarks encouraged them to prioritize environmental considerations. Uh, so it wasn't just about lower costs or faster construction times. Uh, and it marked a bold step away from traditional aesthetics or conventional approaches. And they, it was highlighting a commitment to experimentation, innovation, and originality in their design approach. So I think this experience raised new questions, like how can we further push the boundaries of adaptive reuse? What other unconventional spaces can we reimagine? And it's clear that there's so much potential for innovative and sustainable design solutions that we're just beginning to explore. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Well, these final reflections would be amazing punchlines, actually, for this episode. But I will, nevertheless, uh, try to close this episode uh, the same way I do with all our speakers. So in no more than two sentences, if there was anything you want our audience to remember about this talk, what would it be? Well, uh, we aim to transform Istanbul's ghost towers into vibrant, inclusive communities through adaptive reuse. And our goal was to use adaptive reuse as a learning tool to inspire explorative and speculative design approaches in architectural education. I think these were, would be the two sentences I could summarize our work. And I think they're very good. Zeynep, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for inviting us. So for those of you who are watching us on YouTube, in the description uh, of this video, you can find all the resources, all the materials of this conversation, uh, the studies so of this project um, that Zeynep and I were just chatting, and also in the Let's Talk About Urban Planning website. You can also, so this episode is not only on video, you can also um, check this episode wherever you get your podcast and subscribe to our newsletter to uh, stay in touch with the latest episodes.